Hello and welcome on 360 Sports on Trust TV. I am Adini Ajishafe. Well, while Nigerians are still uh, in pain concerning the World Cup outside, uh, we just have to quickly look at stories trending where Nigerian Football Federation, they apologize to federal government and also Nigerians uh, for the fact that uh, we could not make it to 2022 uh, FIFA World Cup that will be coming up in Qatar later in the year. Well, Nigeria just have to accept that apology because right now the mix has been spilled. Nothing that we can do to uh, get it right again. Well, we just have to quickly look at this particular story alongside Joel Ajayi. Good to have you. A very good morning to you. Well, uh, the Nigerian Football Federation, they did me fit to apologize to Nigerians. All of us should just accept the apology and move on, right? Uh, uh, I, I, I was expecting it even right from that very first day of the on Tuesday mm. because that, that is what many Nigeria need because for them to just leave whatever thing they were doing and then they are try as much as possible to come to the stadium to cheer the Higu and then at the end of the day they got what they did not bargain for so mm. they need it is zero from 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 the apology coming to well they according to general secretary of NFF uh, uh, Sanusi Mohammed say okay uh, they did everything logistic wise just to make sure the game favored Nigeria. But that's football at times, you really plan, it didn't, it didn't go well. And they are really very, very sorry for not uh, qualifying for the World Cup. And from the way it is, I know the pains, the, the people, those that didn't even come to the stadium and watch at home, all Nigerians, it's so painful. But well, it's like I said earlier, I just have to accept it. That's just it. You and I know that. Uh Talking about uh, human resources, physical resources, and Financial enabling resources, environment, all the resources mm. were deployed for that game, to be sincere with herself. And then at the end of the day, all the resources, all the enabling environment turned something else for the fans. It's something that, uh, it, but it's going beyond the apology. Mm. Uh, let's do the right thing. Let's make sure that uh, we put the uh round pen in a uh, in a, in a very uh, uh, square hole. Uh, round hole, right? Oh, round hole. Because it's not about today you apologize, tomorrow you apologize. We are all human beings. Look at what happened in Cameroon, where we were supposed to at least cross that order and get it uh, very right. As we were able to be connected, Nigeria must have been in the, in the final of that uh, uh, competition. And then this one also, where Svetosan was on her side, both the, uh, the fans, the journalists, the stakeholders. If someone look, I mean, look onto me, I look at, one. Just take a look at uh, that stadium. <laughs> look at the stadium, feel to the brain. I, 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 I didn't believe what happened. If someone told me before the, the game that Nigeria will not be in, uh, in, in, in Qatar, I will tell the person that. Uh, just keep quiet because the <laughs> level of preparation, the level of uh, uh, resources put in place for Support. that game is more than enough. Massive. For, for, for agog. The stadium was agog with people. I'm telling you. Outside, inside. Well, so painful. Very painful. But uh, like, like I said, it goes beyond the apologies. Let the Nigeria Football Federation, mm -hmm. in their own way, do the right thing. You have to just uh, appease to the gods of the soccer appeal to many stakeholders that you have shut the door against, appeal to different people that you have uh, haunted to be sincere with herself. That is when we are going to get it very right. If we are to move forward in the country, sports se sector-wise, there is need for a uh, roundtable meeting with all the stakeholders, both people that you shut the door against and those people that in. Let us see how we are going to leave whatever thing that... Uh, we whatever issue and iron out how we are going to because this is the only sector that unites nigeria together yeah. or you, you you will agree with me that the day before that on saturday apc had their competition but you don't have that kind of right. crowd interest people that are interested i was just look at look at this crowd ah, it's, it's massive i'm just telling look you at this. <laughs> Look at this <laughs> for a match. <laughs> all the former stars coming on for Victor Kelba all came just to at least support 
uh, eagles uh, for them to be able to try on. But that's football. Well, we've been talking concerning the apology uh, coming from Nigerian Football Federation that we should just, uh, we should just accept it because uh, they too, they know how painful it is not to qualify for World Cup. A lot of things that will follow, uh, looking at the fact that uh, business-wise, it won't go well with a lot of uh, uh, corporate bodies in Nigeria who are already looking at Qatar that they were able to make some uh, cool money aside that. What about the image? What about so many things? Uh, in fact, so many journalists that are already looking at Qatar <laughs> to cover Honestly. that event. <laughs> well, so painful, but we just have to move on. Like NFL right now, they've apologized. We have to move on. Even though uh, we will support that vandalization that actually took effect, although the Minister of and Sports on their diary uh, says he knows the pain that Nigeria actually felt. But, they don't need to vandalize those things. They spend money to get those things done. Well, uh, it sets, they actually set up two committees to see how the, the whole issue happened with the security and everything. But from my own view, I think, well, from the way it is now, Nigerians just have to accept and move on. Little by little, it's winning up. And uh, we just hope that we can continue to move on. Well, we move away from that particular story. Let's talk about this particular one that has been going around, really. NFF issued a statement to correct that particular false information that the CAF doping officer, Dr. Joseph Kabungo, was killed. He wasn't killed. He actually died of cardiac arrest. Uh, according to news coming from the Nigerian Football Federation, they mentioned uh, the witnesses that were there, a man from Uganda uh, and also a South African that is head, uh, CAF head of security was there to also confirm the story that Dr. Joseph Kabungo was not killed. He was uh, uh, actually died because of a sudden cardiac arrest. He was rushed to the hospital, but he gave up the ghost. That's the news. And a lot of uh, journalists just have to be very careful the way they pay the information around. We always need to be careful. Confirm information before you roll it out. Don't just, because somebody posts something, then he begins to push it. Honestly, it's something that is it's something else that uh, we we don't bargain for in this country this time mm. around. To be sincere with ourselves, I was personally at the stadium, and then we know what happened. Uh, the truth of the matter is that it's not about uh, some people are carrying reports. He was stampeded. He was struggling. He was. But the truth of the matter is that if you look at the media stand, it's directly behind where all the officers will be sitting. Is directly behind them, and then immediately that, that that incident happened, they have their channel to their own uh, that particular place. But carry the information that he was stampeded, he was killed, is 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 a very bad image for the country. Let us be sincere with the with, most painful thing is even the fact that Nigerian journalists, most of them did not even check, they didn't even wait for a statement from NFM. Everybody just started posting. I, 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 I think that, that there should be a proper check of, of, of the blogger of, uh, of this day. If you look at the news generally yesterday, hardly you see a, a, a conventional paper carry that story. Because they were nobody, careful. yes, they, nobody was in the pictures of whatever thing that happened. It was yesterday morning when NFF released uh, a press release regarding that. That is when people are now reading minutes. But the bloggers on that particular early in the morning were the one pushing it that it was stamped because they, they 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 discovered that on that very day. People encroach into the pitch, and then they will say it's that as was a result a of encroachment. That, was that is uh, why it was uh, stampede and uh, lost. That, that was no unfortunate, but we need to just get our information right, like you rightly said. We were at the stadium. There was no stampede. The only thing that happened was I remember that the fans rushed to the stadium after they blew the final whistle. In fact, even. The, the Ghanaian players, after going to greet their fans, to yeah. thank them, they moved back. Then they quickly rushed into the well, tunnel. There. <laughs> there, I, I was surprised to now see, I, I saw that uh, uh, there was a stampede and all that. Come there on, was nothing like careful. that. There was what nothing we, like that. What we paid <laughs> out there, what we write out there online and whatever it is. I, I don't know. I don't know. It, I don't know how uh, people just want to break news that are really false. I, I think it's proper for us to check our information. It's, it's, it, we, we learn every day. Mm. Uh, as a journalist, despite the pain, despite, you will not say because the Nigeria laws, you will just use something that will not speak well for the country. Because Be it as it may, we don't have other country, whether we like it or not. For this this could, country, to this be could actually cause issues between Nigeria and Zambia. Yeah. You understand? And I love the fact that Nigerian Football Federation, Federal Ministry of Sport, they, they quickly uh, had to take the first one by meeting with them, let them talk about this, uh, they settle everything. If that, not, bilateral relations could actually call, it could, it could uh, dampen it. Let, let me tell you the truth. When I got to the office yesterday, my news editor just called me. He said, ah, Mr. Joel, come now. What happened? 
Zambia are threatening Nigeria for you what see. happened. And then why will they allow such things to happen? I said, ah, editor, you are editor, you are my boss. But let me just tell you the truth today. All those stories, all those pictures they were painting regarding the death of uh, Mr. Joseph was not true. I was able to scoot him. I was able to tell him the truth that this is my territory. This I was at the stadium. It's not as if I was watching it on the TV. This is the true picture of the story. That is that was the time he agreed that ah maybe this is the hand, the work uh, work hand of those people that are bloggers, online, and all these things. So it's, it's a lesson for every one of us mm. because, like I was saying. We don't have other country. The truth of the matter is that things might not be working well as a nation, but we have to rally around those people that are shadowed with the responsibility. Those people that didn't want to hear, we try as much as possible to criticize them constructively. It's not as if you will, you will fight them, because it's, it's just a privilege for them to be, to be there. Hmm. That is my own point on this issue. We just hope that things will go well, because uh, concerning that particular issue, it could cause problems. But right now, everything is set to hopefully may so rest in perfect peace. That's Dr. Joseph Kabungo, a medical doctor, doping officer with CAF, who actually lost his life uh, due to uh, cardiac arrest. We just hope that uh, the family will have the fortitude to bear the loss. Now, while we continue talking sport, Nigerians really... Uh, well, little by little, <laughs> uh, the pain of not going to the World Cup is actually going off now. Well, we, can't, we just have to talk about women football. Let's go to women football. Look at matches were played in the match day 13 of the Nigerian Women uh, uh, Football League, where we have in Group A, Nigeria tells defeated Confluence Queen by uh, two goes to one. Uh, good one there for Lorenzo Aminat and Mutrayo Ezekiel scoring for Nigeria Tells. Uh, you have uh, Confluence Queens, uh, they have uh, Augustina Namba who scored, who put one back uh, for that club. Edo Queens, they really did well. They defeated Pelican Stars four goes to nil. A uh, good one for Edo Queens. Uh, Chioma Olise, Yemisi Samuel, Oritoke. Odueke, they were the uh, scorers of those uh, goals. Shoma is scoring a brace in that particular encounter for Edo Queens in Group A of the, the 13th week Nigerian men football league. Now let's look at Group B results as it also went down across different stadia in Nigeria quickly. Bayelsa Queens, it was a good one for them. 5-0. They defeated uh, they defeated the Abia Angels who came visiting, caught seal of precious gifts. Kafaya Bashiru who scored a brace and you have a uh, Etim Edid Young and Joy Jerry. Those are the scorers of those five goals for Bayosa Queens. While Delta Queens, they also won. They defeated FC Robugus of Lagos, two goals to one. Cutsil of Chinaza Argo, and you have uh, Rachel Okotete scoring for uh, Delta Queens there. Well, uh, uh, Gift Monday put one back for FC Robo Queens. Sunshine Queens of Akure peeped Royal Queens of Wari by a long goal where Ovie Ovioma was the scorer of that particular goal. Looking at uh, the fact that the way it is right now, it's still remaining a match to be played between Adamawa Queens and Nasarawa Amazon. But with the way it is, uh, already the Super Six is already shaping up because you can just give it up to uh, the likes of Edo Queens, Nasarawa Amazon, and Nigeria Tells in Group A. They are really making statements. The debutant in this competition from Abuja here, and now they are among the top, uh, top three in that group. Uh, that's Group A, and if you look at Group B, you just have to look at Bielsa Queens, uh, that, that that particular team, Rivers Angels, defending champion. Also, not forgetting Delta Queens, they've all made it to qualify for the Super Six. Well, just uh, to let you know what's actually ongoing over there at the Nigerian Women Football League so far. Uh, honestly, interesting. Thirteen weeks is gone, mm. and then uh, we are seeing a lot of interesting games. We are seeing a lot of. Uh, strength in the game and we are seeing a lot of improvements in the game uh, if you look at this uh, uh, women league you you cannot compare the first game with the 13 uh, games yeah. because we, we were able to improve on the game on a daily basis if you look at the game between Niger that played yesterday uh, the, the winning goal came around 94 minutes mm -hmm. 94th minute of, of of the encounter that one to, is, is to tell you that the game is now uh, strength to strength and then is ski to ski and then uh, the technicality of it, the coaches will be try as much as possible to ensure that uh, they avoid relegation or they be among the top clubs to, to, to reckon with. I think it's a very good uh, uh, one for the Nigeria uh, Women League. And then what me I always say is that uh, we, we still need a lot of... Uh, uh, we are about all this game. We still need a lot of um, sponsor. 
the way you are doing, if, if you look at the Super Eagle game on, on Tuesday, look at the numbers, arrays of this uh, sponsor. Just look at uh, one sponsor, give it to the Women League. Before you know, another, another sponsor will join. Before you know, we get close to five, six, seven sponsors that will make the league interesting because it is sponsor that make the league interesting because they are the one that put their money in the in, in the in the expectations of their own return or whatever uh, interest they have in putting their money. So uh, we appeal to the the league organizer to try as much as possible. The league organizer, the club owners, and then the stakeholders. Let them just look elsewhere. And get the sponsor for this league. I bet it with you. It will be one of the best uh, best league in the in, in the whole world. Even though they have one already, but at least they need more. They to, need more uh, to support yeah. women football. More. Women football in Nigeria is really gro uh, growing. And you look at the fact that uh, most of the time, just like the Super Eagles have now, you compare Nigerian women with the way they play football, what the joy they brought to this country yeah. in the maybe under that is uh, Falconet, Flamingo, the Super Falcons. Yeah. All they've won, all the joy they brought. It's just that uh, we don't give them too much, too much attention. That, that, that is that where they, I was they, they going. Deserve. That is where I was going. Do you know that that Republic Stadium, M uh, Mansur Abiola Stadium, after they finished the the, the, the stadium, it was Fakone that first of all played the game there. But you you didn't see this kind of crowd pre preparedness. Mm. You didn't see this kind of crowd. You didn't see the, 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 this kind of putting enough resources into it. I remember we played against Cote d'Ivoire. We played yeah. play against Cote d'Ivoire in that particular place. You can count the number of people that came for that game. So that is what we are clamoring for. It's not about uh, we want uh, May to be, to, to be triumph and then you, 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 are, you are not putting anything for the female. All of us, are even the female have already, they even brought more lorry to this country more than the May. Don't forget, Falcon, Falcon, Super Falcon happened to be the, 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 the country that won the AFCOM in a larger number than any other country in the world. Super, Super Eagle just won it three, three times, and then the Super Falcon won rule Africa almost 10, uh, 11 times. So it is high time for us to look elsewhere, Pay, put money on this league. That is where you are going to get... Uh, many young girls that are that are out there. If you look at Nigeria, right there, because I had a relationship with the owners of the of the club, all those girls that you are seeing is fifty percent of them. They don't have O. It is that club that brought them to Limelight, and then from them you pick them. Look at the like of Ajibade. It was FC FC Robo that that the lady came out, and then they they they, they got her from the grassroots. And then today he's doing well with at, at the Atletico Madrid in, in, uh, in Spain. Spain there. So we need this kind of uh, um, commitment to this uh, women league, so that all most of our guests that are roaming about the streets, some of them, if you know what some of them are doing for a living, you will bow your head. And then if all these people that have little little money are able to try as much as possible to put the club in order for them to to have something to be doing, I think it, it will be a good one for, for Nigeria Women League. The awareness are not that much in uh, Nigeria Women League, unlike uh, even then PFL and uh, the Super Falcon. So as a, as, a, as a Nigeria, as a stakeholder, I feel pain whenever you are watching uh, the Women League. You will see scanty stadium, you will see a small uh, spectator, and then it's not good for the... For, for, for the league. I think we need to just uh, think outside the box and see how we are going to uh, rescue this uh, situation. They are doing well, no doubt about it. They are doing well, but uh, th th there is need for us to do more for the, for the league to, to, to thrive more in the country. So for me, uh, it, it is an improvement for the, for, for the league, but I, I think they need to do do more about it. Good one there. We've been looking at Nigeria Women Football League match day 13 that was played where at least uh, some clubs did well. Right now, they already have their feet there in the Super 6 that will be coming. Although, with the match to go well, it's really going well for Nigeria of Abuja. 
as we were able to win their game. Good one there. Well, we quickly move away. Let's look at some World Cup uh, results, uh, matches that were played. Where we start from Oceania, a uh, World Cup qualifying, where New Zealand they did well. They defeated Solomon Island by five goals to nil. Good one for New Zealand. Uh, right now, New Zealand are also uh, they have not qualified really. They will be playing against Costa Rica uh, from uh, uh, South America. There, well, Central America rather. They will be playing against Central America, Costa Rica. But for now, New Zealand they have one feet at least just one uh, for the, uh, in the qualifiers as they defeated Solomon Islands, five goals to nil. Now let's look at the other result in the North and Central America uh, where Costa Rica defeated USA, but it, it didn't stop USA from qualifying. USA are still, uh, they, made, they actually qualified. Jamaica uh, two, Honduras one, Mexico two, El Salvador nil. Panama won, and you have Canada. Panama defeated, uh, defeated Canada. Canada also, they've qualified. So USA, Canada, Mexico, uh, they joined those uh, countries have qualified so far. Let's look at uh, Qatar 2022 uh, qualified countries so far. We have 29 teams now that have qualified. Let's take them one by one. Uh, if you can uh, quickly look at the countries that have so far qualified now in the competition. Well, 29 teams, Qatar uh, being the host country. We have Qatar, Germany. Denmark, Brazil, Belgium, France, Croatia, and you have uh, Spain, Serbia, England. Uh, these are the countries so far that have qualified, and we still have more of those countries that are actually there. Switzerland, Netherlands, Argentina, Iran, South Korea, Japan, Saudi Arabia, Ecuador, Uruguay, Canada, and you have more talking about uh, USA and Mexico, parts of the country that are so far qualify in the competition. Ghana, Senegal, Portugal, Poland, Tunisia, uh, Cameroon, Morocco, like I mentioned earlier, Mexico and the United States. Now we have 29 countries so far that have qualified for the uh, World Cup. 32 nations, we are still waiting to have five more. From the way it is, New Zealand will face Costa Rica to get uh, who, we, who qualifies there. And you have Scotland will be facing Wales or Ukraine who qualifies there, plus uh, three more that will be joining. So make it five plus 29 that we already, rather to have three uh, to join the 29 that we have on ground. Three more countries to join them. When by tomorrow, uh, we're looking at, uh, they said they'll be doing the draws. So see, let's see the countries that will be facing, uh, how these countries will be facing one another. But by June, the three countries will be emerging from these three locations for them to have uh, at least uh, participation at the World Cup. The good thing is that for Ghana, uh, I'm happy for them for the fact that uh, <laughs> their coach said they were lucky against Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Now for qualifying, they'll get uh, 12 million dollars. Mm -hmm. Two million for at least uh, qualifying, 10 million, uh, two million for preparation, 10 million also for World Cup. Good one for them. Uh, it's, it's a very good one for them, but uh, I'm still feeling pain as they roll out the names of the country that, <laughs> uh, that, uh, that have qualified for this uh, 2022 Qatar World Cup in uh, uh, that is coming up in November, December. It's painful that Nigeria flag will not be able to fly high in that particular place. But for me, uh, looking at it, you know, we've lost everything in terms of uh, finances. Even uh, mm, assuming we, we, we qualify as a nation, we'll have, we'll have have advantage of col collecting the money for 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 the qualification. But uh, I still have my my bit my my, my my doubts about about the money because the money is just coming in, but mm. so we are we are not seeing what uh, most of them are using it. Okay, assuming we qualify. Assuming we qualify because anytime we want to prosecute match in Nigeria, it is see Nigeria is a different country in the whole world. Anytime we want to prosecute a match, federal government must put money on ground. All this money that they are calling, collecting from the international community, from the qualification and all these things, what are they using it for? That is the question that is begging for an answer. But I will not even want us to dampen into that for now. But the truth of the matter is that it's painful for me not to see uh, Nigeria, my yeah. flag, green, white, green, to fly, to fly high in Qatar come November, December this year. Hopefully, we can wait to 2026 before Nigeria will participate in another World Cup qualifier as the deal has been done. Let's continue to move on. Uh, well, uh, we just have to console ourselves with that. Thank you very much for coming on the show. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Well, it's been a wonderful time on 360 Sport on Trust TV. I am Adeni Ajishafe. Thanks for watching.